Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, we're going to talk about a crustacean that lives off of certain SPS corals, also known as red bugs. We're going to talk about what red bugs are and how to get rid of them from your display tank. For those of you who don't know, I do share information on my Facebook page. The link is down below. Go ahead and check it out if you get a chance. Hope you enjoy the video. Before we get started, I should mention that I did attempt to get video of my red bugs in my system, but because of the video quality was so poor, I had to go online and find corals with red bugs on them so that you guys could be able to see what the red bugs look like. Recently, I removed my green and red Monty caps and turned them into the local fish store for store credit. While they were inspecting them, they found that I had red bugs within the Monty caps. I promptly came home, plastered my cheek up against the glass, and noticed that the majority of my SPS corals in fact had red bugs on them. Red bugs come in the form of hitchhikers on certain SPS corals and unfortunately dipping is not always 100% effective. Despite my best efforts in dipping corals before introducing them into my display tank, I still ended up with these red bugs. Red bugs are small crustaceans with a yellow body and a red head that measure approximately a half millimeter in length. They're very very difficult to see and I literally had to plaster my face up against the glass to see them. Red bugs are thought to feed on certain types of SPS's slime and the waste. Infected corals could lose coloration and full polyp extension over time. Red bugs can even eventually kill certain corals. By no means are red bugs some sort of death sentence or something that's going to cause your system to crash. It's just something you need to deal with. You need to get rid of them. There are certain methods that you can use to get rid of them. We're going to discuss that in a little bit. Red bugs are basically a form of ick for corals. The three most common types of methods to get rid of red bugs is to purchase a dragon face pipe fish like the one you see here. The problem with this guy is that he's a finicky eater and difficult to keep so that wasn't an option for me. Option number two would be to remove every coral from the system and perform a dip. That's labor intensive. Most of my corals are encrusted on the rock so that wasn't an option either. Option number three is the option that I took and I used a heartworm medication that's used for dogs called Interceptor. Unfortunately, Interceptor is no longer sold in the United States. Previously, we were able to get prescriptions from veterinarians for the medicine. The best advice I could give you is to look online for places in Australia that will be able to sell you this stuff through the mail. Fortunately, my buddy had a whole packet of this stuff on hand and he was able to give it to me. As you can see, I'm using the Interceptor that is for large dogs and is chewable. How many gallons one tablet can dose is total speculation. I've read everything from 200 to 400 gallons. The main ingredient found in Interceptor is called Melamycin Oxy. It's the main ingredient found in Interceptor for deworming dogs. This is also the same medicine that kills crustaceans, which is what red bugs are. Since the medication is made to kill off crustaceans, it will not discriminate on which crustaceans will live and which ones will die. It's highly recommended that you remove all your crabs, your hermit crabs, and any shrimp and place them in a quarantine during the process. Upon discovering that you may have red bugs in your system, there is no need to panic and no need to rush into anything. The first order of business is to get online and try to get your hands on some interceptor. While you're waiting for the interceptor to arrive, the next order of business would be to set up a quarantine tank and get it prepped for the introduction of crustaceans that you wanted to save from your display tank. The way I went about setting up the quarantine tank was simply to remove 10 gallons of water from the display tank and putting that 10 gallons of water in the quarantine tank. I then went into my sump area and removed the sponge that's sitting there 24-7 collecting beneficial bacteria for situations just like this where I need to use it for a quarantine setup. Once I was comfortable with the quarantine tank's water being the same as that of the display tank's water, I went ahead and started collecting all the crustaceans that I could and started placing them in the quarantine area. I also picked out some rubble pieces from the sump area and placed it in the quarantine so that the hermit crabs could have something to pick off of. If you ever treated your quarantine tank with copper or any of the equipment that's still in the quarantine tank with copper, you do not want to introduce crustaceans in there because crustaceans are very susceptible to that copper and will die. I was able to collect almost all of my crustaceans for the exception of the pistol shrimp which is underneath all the rocks. The pistol shrimp did survive the first dosing and didn't seem to be affected by the medicine. Once you have the interceptor on hand, the next step is to guesstimate how much of the pill you want to place into your tank. 
In my case, I have a 75 gallon display tank with about 30 gallons in the sump area, minus water displacement from the rock and the sand. I'm gonna guess around 85 to 90 gallons of water in my system. So I'm gonna divide this pill up into thirds and dose one third now. I'll wait a week, dose another third, and the week following that, I'll dose the final third. Now that I have the pill divided into thirds, I'll take one third and grind it down with this mortar and pestle. I wanna make sure that I grind this stuff down to a nice fine dust so that when it's introduced into the system, the fish don't see a chunk of it and are encouraged to go after it and accidentally eat it. Once I'm comfortable, I've grinded the pill down enough, I'll transfer it into a mixing bowl. I'm gonna put RO water into this mixing bowl and mix the contents a little bit more with the spatula. Before we pour the medication into the tank, we wanna do a couple of things to prepare the system for the medicine. I went ahead and removed both of my filter socks removed the skimmer collection cup, I removed the airline to my skimmer, and I also removed the carbon and the GFO. Now it's time to pour the medicine into the tank. I'm gonna go into a high flow area and pour the medication into a high flow area so the medicine dissipates throughout the system. It's important to note that while the system is being medicated, the skimmer should remain on with the airline tube detached and the skimmer's collection cup removed. The reasoning for this is to get any unhatched eggs or red bugs that may be in your skimmer. However, nobody ever mentions doing this for any kind of reactors that are also in the system that would pose the same problems. Those who have successfully done this in the past have left the medicine in the water for 6 to 12 hours. I'm going to go halfway point and leave the medicine in the water for 8 hours. After 2 hours of introducing the medicine into the system, I already started noticing a lot less red bugs on my corals. After 8 hours of having introduced the medicine into the system, I noticed zero red bugs on my corals. I could not find a single one, so that was great to see. I'll repeat the treatment two more times exactly the way I showed you in this video, one week apart from each other, just to ensure I got any of those red bugs that may have hatched after the first or second treatment. So after the eight hour treatment, I went ahead and did a 25% water change. I put everything back online, put the filter socks back in, put the skimmer back online, and reintroduced the carbon so it absorbs the leftover medicine in the system. The one thing I did notice after the eight hours is a bunch of pods were floating around the water column. The fish were gobbling them up. So if you have a mandarin or another type of fish that relies on pods for a food source, I would suggest that you get some pods on hand to be able to reintroduce them back into the tank once the tank has been dosed. I also want to take a second to thank Mang915 for sending me this orange filter for my camera to bring you guys better quality videos in the future. That'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscription button, and we'll see you guys next time.